Now, when it comes to skin, there is no more tricky condition than rosacea, and I should know. So today's video is to highlight five of the biggest mistakes that I've seen when it comes to handling your skin with this problem. Now, spoiler alert, there is a theme with these mistakes. Most of them relate to unpredictability. And if there's one thing rosacea does not like, it's a surprise. It will immediately tend to put your skin on red alert, no pun intended. So make sure you stay right to the end to hear all five so you can be forewarned and forearmed. Error number one involves exposing yourself to too much heat intentionally. Now, the way the blood vessels in our skin work is that they open up, they vasodilate in order to cool us down and typically the skin reddens as a consequence. In rosacea, those blood vessels are overly sensitive and prone to vasodilating at the drop of a hat. So we don't want to provoke that exuberant vasodilatation process unnecessarily. So by exposing ourselves to extreme heats, that's what we're doing. We're encouraging the skin to redden. And for those with rosacea, that process will happen for longer and might potentially increase the blood vessels tendency to do that of their own accord, not what we want. So my advice is to skip the saunas. Showers should be tepid, not super hot, not super long, um, and stick steaming altogether. Now the next mishap that can befall a rosacea prone skin type is using physical exfoliation. I have talked about this before, but it's so important, it's worth me emphasizing again. Now think about it. Most individuals with rosacea have an impaired skin barrier. That means the skin tends to lose water more readily and is prone to dehydration. The last thing anybody with rosacea needs is whittling away at the stratum corneum with anything physical. So that means skipping flannels, physical scrubs, any aggressive toweling, just don't do it. Please, please, please stick to cleansing with nothing rougher than your fingertips. I promise you, your skin will thank you. Now, the next one is about recognizing that rosacea is not a beauty problem, it's a medical condition. And I guess that that's not uncommon. People think that's why they go the route of facialists, for example. Um, they think it's a beauty problem, they're prone to redness, you know, those redness skin, skin care. Um, but it's, it is a medical problem and you know can affect more than just the skin, can affect the eyes and so forth. So I think it's knowing when to ask for help. Now that might mean going along and talking to your local GP. It might mean getting expert care and seeing a dermatologist. Either way, know when you've reached your limits. And if your skin is playing on your mind and it's stopping you from doing things and it's creating anxiety or affecting your mood, then it's a good thing to go and get some proper help um, and get a structured plan. Sometimes even just one visit can make all the difference in the world, so no need to suffer alone. Now, mistake number four involves the idea that facials might be the solution to rosacea. They are not. And in fact, I would strongly suggest avoiding facials in any of the chronic inflammatory skin disorders, rosacea included. Um, too much unpredictability potentially, too many products usually, and a greater likelihood than not of an aggravating effect on the skin and a rosacea flare. Rosacea really is best managed with your own toolkit that you have complete control over and that there are no rogue elements that might potentially flare up your skin. Remember, no one knows your skin better than you do. And on a similar theme, it's really important not to get caught out and have to use somebody else's skincare. Borrowing products or taking recommendations even from friends with rosacea is potentially fraught. You really do need to be rigorous. And I think, you know, most of the people I see for the first time in the clinic already know this about their skincare routine. They must be disciplined. They must not fall prey to twinkly, shiny newness. Um, the less complicated the products you're using on your skin, the better. And that then creates a safe space for you to use the right active ingredients that can potentially control your skin and also help you tackle the signs of premature aging, which for many rosacea sufferers is also a primary concern because 30 to 50, pretty much a sweet spot for that kind of um, effort. 
and typically in fair-skinned, light-eyed individuals, more at risk of UVA damage. So potentially more work to be done on that front anyway. So stick to your own products, be rigorous, be really strategic about anything new that you um, integrate into your routine and you know, follow your own gut instincts about which products are best for you. Um, try not to be seduced by shiny new things. So I think the most important thing with rosacea management, when we think about the mistakes I've talked about, is being really boring about your skincare. It's being consistent, it's being diligent, it's knowing exactly what products are safe for you um, and maybe keeping multiples of them. I mean, Aven recovery cream got discontinued recently and changed to a different formula that's kind of being marketed as being the same product when it really isn't. And I know that for a lot of patients that's called absolute chaos because there really wasn't a product like it on the market um, to replace it. The Tolerance Extreme range is quite good, but it's not quite the same in terms of texture and skin feel, um, whether you're using the emulsion or the cream. So, you know, I'm not saying that you should stock up on the assumption that every product that you know and like is gonna be discontinued, but you know, it's the kind of thing where if you know what's good for your skin, having a couple on standby isn't such a bad idea. So consistency, something I talk about a lot in skincare anyway, I know, but at least I'm consistent with my themes. And in the case of rosacea, it really will serve you to adopt that approach. Um, it's certainly how I, I kind of counsel patients. And it's almost part of the reason to keep people on follow-up because I find that the longer between appointments, oftentimes the more likely they are to have incorporated something that may not necessarily be the best for their skin in the interim. So some things for you to bear in mind, um, it's not the complete list of things that can make things worse, but it's an important selection of them. Obviously know your triggers, guys. I'm just assuming that by the time you've watched this video, you are conscious of triggers. We've talked about them a lot already in this series, and it's important to know what makes your rosacea worse environmentally, in terms of diet, in terms of skincare. Um, but some other ideas for you to think about. Now, if there's anything in particular about rosacea that I haven't covered in this series of videos so far, give me a shout and let me know. Um, I do want to kind of create this library of content around rosacea. So if you haven't checked out my video on eight things to know about rosacea or indeed on active ingredients to know about with rosacea, do settle in and watch those as well. As always, if you'd like this video, hit like and subscribe so I know, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.